This is Michael Lavery, or as he's better known, the Hammer Man. And I teach people how to harness both sides of the brain so that you can become highly ambidextrous at sports. Michael says that through using a unique set of ambidexterity drills he created can drastically improve your hand-eye coordination and your golf game. Two, four, five, six, seven, two, eight, and nine, thirty. Yeah, that was just beginner's luck there. So I went down to Orange County, California to see if this is something that can really help people be better. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually spin. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin and, and I'm going to get movement. Yeah. I yeah. know this proves I have too much time on my hands, but even when my brain is a little bit confused from spinning around, Brendan, I don't advise you to bet against me in a short game test at the present. All right. I am a gentleman that has studied the human brain for about 30 years, and I'm a brain coach, and I've written a book called Whole Brain Power, and that book is available on Amazon, and people are doing my program in different sports and having phenomenal success. What kind of reception have you had to your, your brain training from the established golf community? Well, people look at what I'm doing and say, what am I going to do, bounce a golf ball off a hammer, and I'm going to do my penmanship and my yeah. memorization drills. And I have some outside-of-the-box techniques yeah. that are actually well-received by my students. But when you look at it from an outside perspective, you say, well, this is pseudoscience at best. So people go, you know, if it could have been done, it would have been done already. But I believe yeah. that we do have breakthroughs and science now, especially in the brain industry, which proves that the brain can physically grow. And that's what I teach, the hands grow the brain. So what I do with a person, I say, listen, you're a right-handed dominant person. What's wrong with your left hand? I said, doesn't the left hand and the right hand hold the club together? So why don't, why don't we become more ambidextrous for the, our brain function and our hands and our body and even learn how to hit a ball from the opposite side? The first question I always ask, even though we've already got into it a little bit, but the first question I have to ask you is, the USGA and some other people in the golf establishment have said that once somebody's been golfing for three years, it's over. You're stuck. You cannot get any better. I mean, maybe you can go from a 10 handicap to a 9.8, but you're basically on a slow decline or stuck in your skill level. What would you say about that? I would say that the system now is fostering that type of thinking, but I'm completely outside of the box and I have case studies where people are improving tremendously by using my outside of the box system. So instead of the person going to the driving range and hitting more balls, I ask them to do something that's outside of the game. I ask them to work on their penmanship so that they have much more control of their impulses so that if it's a downhill putt 18 feet and they're having that proper touch and they can feel it and they can nudge the ball up to the cup instead of knocking it 15 feet past and missing the comebacker and then all of a sudden get, getting a four putt. Michael will not, he's a golf coach, really just an athletic coach that will not really work very much on your swing. He's gonna have you do drills with a hammer that he has become amazingly good at doing Guinness Book World Record. Uh, so he'll basically, the, the foundation of his program is to bounce a ball on a hammer. Or even on a 64 degree wedge. And so when I say other to- Other hand-eye coordination drills that will then impact your golf, right? So when, I, when I'm stopping the ball here, even though we have a side wind, yeah. when I'm making that ball come to a rest, that means that something in my brain is working rather efficiently for calmness. Yeah. Now if I could do that with either hand, if, if, if you can't master a drill such as the one I'm demonstrating at this particular moment, then why should you be really comfortable with this club around the green? And that's where a lot of people get exposed. And I got a suggestion for you and yeah. people that are watching your YouTube channel. Let's take this hammer here. This is a rubber mallet. So what, what I want you to do is I want you to think about bouncing it consecutively. So the first time a person will take this hammer, they might do it five times and yeah. feel really awkward. Their left hand, they might do it two times. Mm -hmm. So a student 30 days later is doing this hammer 500 times in a row with either hand and says, coach, it's really bizarre, but I'm definitely hitting the center of the club more often. There's only so much time in a day. There's only so much time that normal people can devote to getting better at golf. Why should someone take their time and devote it to 
hand-eye coordination drills and, and these whole brain power drills. I can do this drill here 1,000 times in four minutes and 48 seconds. Mm -hmm. So that means yeah. that my eyesight is definitely being improved and I'm flipping the hammer and I'm spinning the ball off this rubber mallet and I'm bouncing it on the shaft and then, and then I'm making it come to a stop. So this is causing my confidence level to improve and Increased dramatically and it's not just making you a better hammer ball bouncer it's making you a better golfer you're saying how about this my grip strength is pretty strong it's well amazing. Ted, Ted yes. Williams said okay. that Ben Hogan had five bands of steel so if I've got coordination and really strong dense forearm muscles mm -hmm. and one of my students is actually t sending me text messages of the fact that he's bouncing a ball off a four pound sledgehammer almost 400 times so he says coach my irons are flying further. And with this, you can say definitively, okay, today I've bounced the ball a hundred more times than I have the day before. At least you can see I'm getting better at this. Whether or not it, it leaks into golf, that's, that's what we're trying to determine. But you say it does. I certainly, well, there's a gentleman named Robert Twine. If you read about him on the internet, he shot a 57 five days after initiating my program. Yeah, this is true. I, I, I Googled searched this and I've been to the, the course in, in Costa Mesa where he did it and it's the course record there. That's right? correct, 57, 13 under par. He actually lipped out his last putt. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to make the argument that you throw a baseball with one hand, you throw a football with one hand, you sink a basketball, you play ping pong, you play tennis, you serve a ball, you play right. golf with two hands. And a lot of players know that their non-dominant hand, their lead hand, the one that pulls down, is a lot weaker. I just spoke to a gentleman that is a, a top flight amateur player. He goes, Michael, I'm so embarrassed about how weak my left hand is now that I'm doing your whole brain power program. I'm so exposed. My right hand can bounce that ball on the rubber mallet the first day 150 times. My left hand's 47. Yeah. But then a, a month later, he expects to do 300 with his left hand and then move over to the more difficult hammers. So just imagine a person being able to bounce a golf ball on the round side of a ball peak hammer. So one day I just imagined I could do it. One, and then I went one, two, and then I went one, two, three, and I keep on building up one, two, three, four. So these are almost metaphorical pars in my brain. Yeah. So if I can hit that ball 10 times in a row with my right hand, and then with the left one, and then one, two, and then one, two, three, and then say to somebody, I'm gonna recite something simultaneously. I know this sounds so, far removed from getting better at golf, but yeah. this is called, called confidence. So if I'm going Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, L, K, J, I, H, E, F, E, D, C, B, A. And when you do these drills, because I've experimented with it uh, quite a bit in the last 14 days or so, you feel your brain on fire. That's I mean, exactly. When, when I'm trying to do that, I mean, I don't know, like I was saying, I don't, I don't know if it's psychosomatic or what it is, but you feel like calories are burning in your brain. They're absolutely being uh, sucked into the neural fields and the astrocyte system. So I'll, I explain all this in detail in my book. So if we can just yeah. show the book to the camera here, you might want to just show this yeah, to the camera here. Yeah, yeah, so that's called the Whole Brain Power book. And so there's all kinds of examples of people in history that were naturally lefty. For instance, right. if you do some research on Ben Hogan, he's naturally a lefty. He had a left-handed five iron as a kid, yeah. and then he went to, to get a whole set of left-handed clubs down at the thrift store, and the guy says, uh, we only have right-handed clubs. So Ben Hogan, one of the greatest ball strikers ever, if he had his options as a kid, he would have been a lefty. We might never have even heard of him. He There's some, been some other uh, scientific studies in Finland. They, they had seen a group of 8,000 children and noticed that the ampidextrous ones or the or the one were had a higher proclivity for ADD and ADHD. Is it dangerous to to train your offhand too much? Because is the brain meant to compartmentalize these things? Is it okay to be crossing the corpus colostrum? Or I, I believe that if you just logically debate on piano playing for a young kid. Yeah. I mean, the complexity of being able to play the bass and the treble simultaneously is pretty mind-boggling. Yeah. And drumming is quadridexterity and right. swimming. So when mm -hmm. you really think about it, ambidexterity doesn't cause the psychosis that right. some of these people are claiming and doesn't okay. cause this, the kid to have a, a higher incidence of ADD. Right. I don't really think that they can prove that scientifically. 
I right. think that if you take a natural lefty though and say, no, you're not going to write with your left hand, you're going to be right handed, yeah. which we did for centuries, yeah. that causes all kinds of confusion in the brain and oftentimes will cause stuttering and, and, psycho and social anxiety too oh. for being told that the, but the way I naturally do it is wrong. Well, that's yeah. similar to saying that a kid that wants to throw a baseball off the mound left handed, that you got to throw a righty. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't do that to our athlete, would you? Well, they right. did it to the Babe Ruth. They said, Mr. Ruth, don't don't write with your left hand, write with your right hand. And maybe, just possibly, they made him a better athlete. You will read about my story about how I became a tournament level tennis player ambidextrously and all. everybody said that right. it was impossible to do it, but I practiced and I developed my and, handwriting to and, be. And when you were done with, your, with tennis, once you had developed the skill to play with your right hand forehand and your left hand forehand, you became a better tennis player than you were before? A much better tennis much player. Much better. And yeah. every time I do the hammer drills, every time I do 50 in a row on the ball ping hammer with my left hand, my right hand does 300. How many times if you, I mean, it'd be an insane quantification, but how many bounces do you think oh, you've done? Oh, over 20 million. Over 20 million. Well, I used to do yeah. 10,000 times a day, so that's, that's times one. One year, 365 days, that's 3.6 million. How do you million. keep up your motivation to do 10,000 oh, bounces I, I, in a day? I just it love is, it. Is, there's something mesmerizing about it when I've been doing it. <laughs> it, it, it you, you find yourself planning to do 20 minutes of, of hammer drill practice, and you're out there for an hour. That's true. So when I'm bouncing a ball from Now, the, this is a very small hammer so, that he's bouncing. So when I'm bouncing the ball from the flat hammer to the round hammer like this, this proves I have way too much time in my hand, Brendan. The first thing I saw when you, when you were doing this, the first thing I thought when I saw this, I said, is this really going to improve my golf game or is this guy has just found his own little quirk niche skill that he's good at no. and he's going to say that everyone else needs to do it, almost putting you on a better pedestal. Well, the thing about it is, is anybody that wants to challenge me says I can do the ball ping hammer better than you. I said, well, get re ready to do 400. You might spend the rest of your lifetime to get that number. You don't think there's another person on earth that can do 100 on the ball ping hammer? No, there's probably people that can do 100, but 400, we're getting into rarefied okay. territory. Okay. And, and, to, and to actually... Of all, of all the things to improve your hand-eye coordination, the hammer drill. Why, why, what makes bouncing a ball on a hammer... If I'm able to bounce the ball on this round side and do runs that are really up into the hundreds, yeah. then when it, when it comes to the flat side, I can actually flip the hammer from one hand to the other. This is a piece of cake. So, and I'm even spinning the ball as, you dem as I'm demonstrating it's for you. It's the type of thing that most people, they've never even attempted to do that in their life. So they might be thinking, well, maybe with a few days practice, I could do that. It is really hard to well, do these well, things. Well, you, you saw me earlier today and I was spinning the ball. I don't know if the camera can capture the fact yeah, that this ball is spinning pretty radically. But yeah. not, so if I'm moving at the same time, and I, I do I know where my hand is? I think I know where my hand is. So just like you bounce a ball on a hammer, you do it on a, on a driver, you do it on a I do it on a shaft, I do it on a shaft of a club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I was really training to do it 200 times in a row, and you gave me enough incentive, if there was a $10,000 prize, I'd be definitely making a video of, t of 200 in a row. So, th yeah. so this is a drill that I ask my students to do. Take the ball and then, and then make it come to a rest. Yeah, get it to just settle in one dimple. Well, even the, the wind's yeah, the causing wind's me to pull. It's very windy here. But yes. so, yeah. so what we're doing now, that's with my right hand. So this with my left hand. So there's a lot of times you'll have a slow round of golf. Mm -hmm. So when it's a slow round of golf, I, got, I, I say to my playing partner, you don't mind if I just bounce this ball? Oh, dude, it's not a problem at all. And I'm doing this. So after I've made a putt, I, I come back from the green yeah. and I'm walking over to it's my It's keeping cart. your hand-eye coordination sharp. I'm staying in the moment. Yeah. Like I said, but when I do the ZYXWVUT drills and, and A1B2 and all these different kind of memorization drills, I can feel the calories burning. You've been doing this so long the threshold for you to really feel the activation and the work happening in your brain, is, I, is it really difficult pushing, or no, you just have to keep the, push the bar? I keep yeah. on pushing the bar up higher. Yeah. So one of my students says two to the 100 is power. Mm -hmm. So two, four, eight, 16, 32. This is what I had Twine doing. And okay. so, so, so one of the things I would do with Twine is say, catch the ball, catch the ball. Okay. And then and listen to my request now. Now catch the ball and answer the question with a complete sentence and okay. give me the ball back. Who was the first president of the United States? George Washington was the first president. Thank you so much. States. So what happens is most people don't even play that game. So I want you to imagine that you have a, yeah. a penny, a nickel, and a dime in your hand. 
hold on to a penny, nickel, and dime in your hand. Mm -hmm. Bob's mom has three kids, and those kids' names are are penny, nickel. Who's the third kid? Bob. That's very good. Most people say yeah. dime. They don't yeah. pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if your brain was paying attention, but you were calm at the same time throughout your day, yeah. and, and you were you were seeing things that other people didn't see, and you were playing golf, and you had this intuition, this savantism that Mo Norman had, that Ben Hogan had, that Bobby Jones had. You had this brain that was more alert and more calm, and you could see something. You could see the break that other people never saw. I believe that our brain has a savant in it, and that's why I, I encourage the ambidexterity of the handwriting and these hammer drills. It, essentially, if a person is going to attempt to do what I'm going to demonstrate for you. I'm bouncing that ball, so I'm, I'm having little bounces and I'm having bigger bounces. So, so I have the consistency, now smaller bounces. Now I'm going to actually attempt to calm my brain down and stop the golf ball. And there are, there are hundreds of thousands or, or tens of thousands, whatever, of calculations going on in your brain and the timing of doing all that. If you had an EEG on my brain at that present time, yeah. it would show my brain's lighting up as a Christmas tree. Yeah, I'd love to see that. <laughs> so in order for a person to be able to keep this ball on here, this is intuition. I have to know and I have to have a braking system. This braking system is connected to the neurotransmitters of GABA, dopamine, your serotonin, your acetylcholine. Yeah. And so all these chemicals are produced by neural bundles in the brain. And people ask, why did I get into this? I said, the reason I got into this, I wanted to get better at golf, tennis, guitar playing, being able to project my voice, uh, have a phenomenal memory. So I'm going to encourage everybody to, to check out the book again, Whole Brain Power. That's correct, Whole Brain Power. You can find it on Amazon or in the link or anywhere else. And I will let you know and everybody know that I've been doing this for just a very short time, 14 days or so about an hour a day or something like that and then journaling at night and we, I did shoot a, a, my best score in about I tied my best score in about three years well you you have the 40-day plan yes yeah. and I'm, I'm going to be chronicling my journey I've been doing a, 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 di a video diary of me doing these drills and I have a really big tournament coming up at the end of May May 30th that I've never qualified for that maybe this will be the thing that gets us over the end thank you Michael oh it was my honor Brendan thank you